our next conversation, our candid conversation, came from something that I read in the New York Times, and it stopped me on my tracks because it, it related to me in so many ways, and so many women in our audience. I've been looking forward to diving into this next conversation with you all. So this story, a lot of people are talking about it. You might have even seen it on your social media feed. It, it has the information that a report that started out a controversial conversation. Single women own and occupy more homes than single men in the United States. Okay, you read that, you think, all right, right? Uh, shout out to the single women in our audience who clearly own their own home. <laughs> so that was a... So guys, hey guys, it's your girl, Melanie. So I came across another, yet another video that pushes the narrative that women are having a date down because men in this world are just too dusty. They don't own their own homes. They're not achieving anything. And we already know that when these things come out, they cherry pick data. Um, they cherry pick a certain segment. They don't really go into all the details about it. But I want you to notice that these women are just so proud that they own their homes. And that's fine to be proud of yourself, but it's, the fact that it's more than single men, anytime they can dunk on men, you know, the ones that they want, the, they want men to make more than them. They want men to have more than them if they're for dating and marriage, but they also want to do better than men and have more than men. So again, women who have this mindset, they're achieving a lot, making a lot of money, but then complain that they have to date down because men aren't keeping up when they're excited that men can't keep up. You see how it's oxymoronic? Like it makes no sense, but let's, <laughs> let's cheer. Okay. According to a new study from the latest US census and home ownership is not only the area, the only area where women are seemingly overtaking men. When it comes to education, women make up 60% of college enrollments and over half of the workforce with university degrees. And with women more self-sufficient and financially successful than ever before, here's the controversial part. It makes it hard to date, according to the article. I know, I was 500 when I got married. So I've seen it referred to as a dating imbalance because women say they're struggling to find partners that match up with their achievements in education, finances, and life experiences. Our next guests are some of the women who say they can relate to it. Tech marketer Renee Bruner just bought her very own home at age 30. Not only did she buy the home, she is doing a gut renovation of the entire place by herself. Content strategist Tamer Nisbeth also recently became a first time home buyer after pooling her resources to purchase an apartment here in New York City, and that is not easy. <laughs> and Adriana Herrera is an entrepreneur and founder of a successful tech startup. All three women say they're experiencing these challenges in their dating life. Actually, it's talked about all the time, and it, it permeates. It's like, it's like the people who do these shows, they don't, and I have nothing against Tamron Hall, but it's like, they don't really, they don't go on TikTok. They don't really have their ear to what is going on in the world. When they talk about women having more college enrollment, yeah, because universities are hostile to men. Men are being shut down. Anything that men want, anything, everything's labeled as misogynist or the patriarchy. A lot of times these, these colleges have, are lean very, very liberal. And they don't really have, they, they scoff at traditionalism and which most men, when it comes to relationships, marriage and dating are traditional. They, their voices are overpowered. They're shamed. They're, and, and then also men are realizing going into debt, thousands of dollars of debt to get a college degree, it's not worth it for them but when they can go out and start making money in other arenas that don't require a college degree. But see, none of these things are factored into that. It's just women are enrolled in college and they're buying their homes. And so it's, it's just this, this fluff. It's just fluff. But it's talked about a lot. It's just the, the side of it that is not talked about is the men's experience. It's only about women. So I don't know where they got that from. When I have those moments as, you know, when I was not married, I'd be like, I did that. Mm -hmm. So you're in your, I did that moment. And then when does it occur to you that doing that might be intimidating to a man? <sighs> Even before really? I bought my home, 
I think there's always been an unspoken stigma of like, if you are a single woman buying a home by yourself, then it's almost like you're giving up on finding a man and having a family. Versus if you're a single man doing the same thing, it's like you're preparing yourself to be more desirable mm -hmm. and setting yourself up to have a family. I want to know how many men, are you guys intimidated when you meet a woman who's a functioning adult and has a place to live, whether she rents or she's bought her own home? Do you think to yourself, I am so intimidated that this woman bought a home. I can't possibly date her. I, I can't possibly go out with her. This is just too overwhelming. Are there some men that could see that as maybe if she's, you know, high maintenance, guys will see a red flag in a woman if she's spending a lot of money or she has a certain lifestyle that he's not looking to fund or that he can't afford? Yes, it's not intimidation. They're just making a calculated choice that that's not for me, but they're not scared and intimidated. Why do, why do women keep using this word that they're in, men are intimidated? I don't know a single man that says they're intimidated because a woman owns a home. Like the, the <sighs> and that's always been a strange thing for me. And so I waited for a, a while trying to find the right person. And then I decided I'm gonna live the life I want now. And that's what all three of you have done, which is what the article talked about. Adriana, with all of the things you've accomplished in the tech world, you describe yourself as a whole, fulfilled, happy woman, like an amazing cake looking for the frosting. Yes. I love that quote. I love that quote. Yeah. <laughs> but if we're going to keep the symbolism here, finding the frosting has been hard. It has. Did, what, was that surprising to you? Because you, you, one would think, you know, this would make a woman more desirable. And for perspective, in the 70s, women could not even have a bank account without men signing on. So that's how far with Hillary Clinton just leaving this room, many, many other advancements. But you don't think that it's going to mm -hmm. set you back in dating. When did you start to experience that? When I created my first tech company. Mm -hmm. So being Mexican-American, Latina, there's very few of us that start high growth tech companies. 1% mm -hmm. of all institutional capital goes to Latinas. I'm one of those people. Wow. And I don't date men in tech because it's been important for me to be able to say I stood on my own two feet and I didn't get to where I was going because some man helped me. Right. Okay, so this long-winded thing, who talked about her being Mexican-American? Like, you see the victimization, not only she's a woman, she's Mexican-American, and it's not, like, that had nothing to do with the conversation, and this is how these women are leading. She's, it's, and then she doesn't want to date any man that's in tech. Those are the men that are around her. So where is she planning to find a man? And just even this victimization and, and pointing this out, like, so it's especially hard for me because of all these things. Where is the correlation? It, I believe a lot of times women, they see these things that, you know, like some victimization, I'm a woman, I'm Mexican, I'm this, I'm that. And so therefore, if something goes wrong, I'm not getting my desired outcome or the results in my life. Therefore, they, there's nothing wrong inherently with me, which she clearly doesn't think. She's just looking for frosting. She's perfect. She's just looking for a man to add a little frosting to her. Um, because she's so perfect and done everything right, that therefore, if it doesn't go right, it has to be one of these reasons outside of myself, something I can't help. It's my heritage, my ethnicity, my uh, sex. It's, uh, it's men, it's institutions. It's someone else's fault other than me looking in the mirror, listening to men, seeing what men value. Men, like Tamron Halt said that men, this will be, make you more desirable. Ladies, it does not make you more desirable because you are accomplished and have a home. That adds to you, but only if you have the other things that a man is looking for. Like where are women, where are women getting this? I think because we find it desirable in a man, we think that men find it desirable in us, and it's not true. Hey, Mary. <laughs> you, this is so interesting with your story. You, you talk, you love traveling. You, as, as Renee said, you're living your life. You yeah. said that you don't even tell men that you own a home because they're already intimidated, and that would make things more difficult. 
I think it's one of those things that it's not likely to come up in our first conversation. Because it would I, come up in mine. Like, I own a home in Brooklyn, New York. But, <laughs> but if by the time we're talking about where I went to school or where I've traveled and what I want to do next, if I can tell that someone is intimidated at that point, then it doesn't make sense to then have a conversation about owning a home because that's just one more thing to add to it. It makes more sense to just say, How we're not aligned at this moment, and I'm gonna go to the next one. You're gonna go to the next one. Yeah. So yeah. when you saw this article in the New York Times, did you say, I, I'm not alone. I mean, this is, it's not just about women in big cities. This is across the country you're seeing this. Are we outpacing in the dating, the imbalance? How do you describe it? I think that there's a sense that we can be outpacing some of the men that are around us, but at the same time, I do have girlfriends who are successful, ambitious, yeah. and they have found their men. So there are, there are those people out there who are aligned with us, who do want what we want, but it's, where do we find them? We were talking backstage. Oh. Where do we actually go? <laughs> who are those? Do you know the whole their single friends? ears all pushed up? <laughs> Literally, everybody who's single in the audience, I can tell they're like, go on, <laughs> tell us more. This therapist and author of the book, Self Love in Action, Zoe Crook. Please welcome Zoe to our show. Thank you so much for joining this conversation. Um, so, for people who might be saying, is the dating imbalance real? Adriana, you told the story in an article in Entrepreneur Magazine, 2013. You had a boyfriend um, and you shared some very successful news. Rather than being excited, you saw instantly that this was the opposite reaction from him. What happened? So um, I went over to his house uh, with a copy of Entrepreneur Magazine. I was surprised to see my big old face on page six <laughs> uh, and a feature. And I was like, look, can you, can you believe that my company is in here and they're naming me Do Good Entrepreneur to Watch? And he looked at it, closed it, slammed it down on the desk. And I, it was the sound was like my heart breaking. Oh. And then he turned to me and said, well, are you going to be able to be home and cook me dinner when I get home from work? Oh, OK. Yeah. So since 2013, this is, was filmed in 2023, 10 years ago, she had a boyfriend. And we don't know the other side of the coin. We don't know what the relationship dynamics were. We don't know what was going on. But obviously, there was an issue in the relationship. relationship. She's spinning it like he's just this misogynist that can't believe she's not going to be home barefoot and pregnant and cooking dinner for him every night. To me, that sounds systemic of something else going on where this woman is probably not prioritizing the relationship or the home and is spending a lot of hours working. There's an imbalance in it. Maybe she's talking about work. Maybe she has no free time. Maybe, you know, she's under stress a lot. They're getting into arguments because she's so stressed out about her company and she's picking fights. Maybe um, they're not being intimate because she's, you know, she her mind is so focused on herself and her business. We don't know. But you see, oh my gosh, she slammed it down. She's just saying this, and we should just take it at face value. That's this man is just, just that he's just he just cannot stand the idea of his woman doing well. The man you chose, he just cannot believe it. He just is that misogynist, girl. Do do you still talk to him? Oh no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> You know, for people who say this is just in a woman's head, it's not. It's real. No, it's real. Yeah, I see it in my practice all the time. Um, there's definitely an imbalance between, you know, successful women and men. But I don't think it's for the reason we think. What do we? What is it then? Well, okay, first um, of all, what do we think it is? Well, I think it's important to first define yeah. what modern manhood means so and we've done whole shows on it too. yeah so anthropologists use the three p's they say that men find their manhood from being able to protect provide and procreate so if a man is sitting across from a woman who's already provided for already protected and maybe she has kids doesn't want kids or at least has the means to do it by herself that man using that narrative is going to sit there and think how do i fit into her life how how do i provide um what's my purpose here so, um, love. Well, <laughs> it doesn't start with a P, though, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So I think that we need to go a little deeper. Okay. And um, because, you know, we're not getting married anymore for the reasons we used to get married, like right. 
I don't need someone's cow. They don't mean, need my dowry. You know, like we're getting married to have a spiritual experience. Yeah. So we what? have to kind of abandon this old. Okay. So th this, this therapist lost me. We're getting married for a spiritual experience. Is she talking about a Christian wedding or Muslim wedding or just the, her, the energy exchange and the, and the, and the aura and it, it see, so not only do you see a lot of feminist ideology and what they're saying and what they're doing in the mindsets, but now we got to get into the hocus pocus and crystals and all these different things. Now it's a spiritual wedding. That's not the purpose of marriage. And I think, and then Tamron is saying it's for love. Like, y'all, this is, this is tough, tough. Narrative and look at where we're not able to connect with ourselves on a deeper level, because that's what, that's why we're getting into romantic relationships. So, so the, the three P's are, are at our core as humans, right? I guess for males. It's cultural. Cultural. It's cultural. cultural. Okay. Yeah. So that's, so what then, how do you counter that instinct, I guess would be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, I think it's happening. I think it's slowly happening now. Men are going to therapy more. They're working on themselves more. And so are women. Like women also have to abandon this narrative. Yeah. yeah. yeah they are. But you were saying, but women have to do what? They also have to rework the narrative. They also have to rework the three Ps because there's other ways for a man to be a provider and be a protector. It doesn't necessarily need to be from the money he brings in or the house that he has. You know, there's other ways to provide for your partner I agree and, with and this. emotionally spiritual. So you're I saying as this. women, we have to, because I would think the onus would be on the man to understand it's, there are other ways to protect. It's, it's, cultur it's oh. culturally, because I also think that women are dating with that narrative, right? It affects all of us. Because uh -huh. if we're dating thinking that um, a man has to have the three Ps, mm -hmm. and then men are thinking that way, right? That's like it point. affects all of us. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know, 30s? And I was dating someone and I was um, exhausted with quote, failed relationship. Yeah. And I distinctly remember dimming myself down because yeah. I didn't want, and that was completely unlike me. Yeah. Hello, I live to shine. And so I found myself doing it. Relationship didn't work. And I, for the first time, my dating life had a regret. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, once you start on this path, you can't really go back. That's yeah. the thing, because then you'll resent the man you're with, you'll resent yourself. And here's the thing, there are men out there who are doing the work mm -hmm. and who will admire all of your accomplishments. Yeah. No, yeah. That's, that's this exactly is delusion. What all right, guys, that, it, every, there's nothing concrete here. There's a lot of delusion in spinning the narrative and encouraging women that they, I'm dimming my light if I am not, if a man is not appreciating my accomplishments and all, all of these accomplishments, and instead of, if the relationship is supposed to be spiritual, as she says, why aren't they, why aren't these women, why are these women worried about anything financial at all? Why are they worried about any of that in, in material possessions? If it's this spiritual journey and, and, and getting to know yourself better, then you should be able to pair up with any kind of man, regardless of the accomplishments, if it's greater than you or not. But at the, at the end of the day, these conversations are just circular, just addressing, addressing what women are feeling, but at the same time, blaming men and then giving themselves a pat on the back, all the clapping. And then, and then at the end of the day, it's just a feel good moment to reaffirm to them that they've made no mistakes, that the path they're on is good and that they don't have to dim their light. And that some man, some magical Prince Charming He's just going to come out of nowhere and just really appreciate your accomplishments and it's going to all work out. Guys, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this video and I will see you on the next one. Bye.